Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another comic book reading. And what we're going to do for this reading, we're going to go to the golden age of comics and we're going to read Love Scandals number one from 1950. Okay, and uh, as before, what we're going to do, we're going to crack this thing open and we're going to flip through the comic and take a look at the whole comic. And then what we're going to do, we're going to come back to the first story because this is sort of an anthology. There's uh, three, four stories in this, four comic book stories with a one page sort of, a, I guess, romance story, just text type set in here. But we're going to come back and read the first story in this and uh, just to let you know this cover is done by a comic book artist uh, called bill ward okay and bill ward um, was around uh, he was born in 1990 and he was a uh, he was a basically a good girl cartoonist he was a creator of Torchy and uh, Torchy made uh, her first uh, appearance in Dollman number eight in 1946 and then Bill Ward sort of had a series of Torchy from 1949 to 1950 right and um, Bill Ward sort of started off at I believe in graphic design and stuff like this and got into comic book publishing um, sort of apprenticing uh, at a comic book a comic book house where he sort of got uh, did a little bit of work for some other comics as well but basically he pulled out of doing comic book art in 1953 right and then after that he basically did a lot of uh, sort of comic book cartooning in the same style as sort of far side one page one panels with a little bit of description uh, in, in the art that different types of indie comics and magazines published including some porn magazines right so he basically went from comic book cartooning to um, or comic book art to creating cartoons in the same style of far side and whatnot right and i had the opportunity to take a look at um, a couple of the original pieces of his cartoon style that he did that they used to take pictures of and sort of print in the magazines that his art was being his art was being featured and that artwork was absolutely brilliant and they weren't like small pieces of art they weren't you know little pieces of art or panels like this that he worked on they were like one meter one and a half meter by one one and a half meter of art which was absolutely brilliant the details in it and you know I went to a comic book shop where the person was auctioning off two of the original art pieces by Bill Ward and they were magnificent I tried to get my hands on them uh, but they went for way above what I was uh, what my budget allowed to buy right there was you know I bid a maximum of like 300 or 350 dollars and they went for fifteen hundred dollars or so so if I had the money I would have definitely um, you know pay that price for them but that was way beyond my budget but at some point i would love to get my hands on some of those original pieces or at least one of them right but what we're going to do is flip through this thing and take a look at this thing okay now while doing the research in this okay i'm going to give you a little bit of more history regarding this comic book while we crack this thing open okay and i have the sort of little notes here i basically ended up paying for this book i ended up paying 60 61 dollars 62 dollars us for it right and it's graded at good very good okay it's complete but it's uh, the inside uh three uh the center pages are loose from the staple and there's only one staple on this okay so let's just crack this open and we'll take a look at it and i'm going to give you a little bit of history regarding this comic book specifically this issue okay let's bring this out and the glare is going to disappear because these are mylar bags i have these in so they have a you know they provide 
more protection for the comic book but they do have a glare to them right so those of you who are into comic book collecting right there's a couple of things you're going to notice here okay when you see the cdl in some of the old uh golden age comic books that means they're canadian edition comic books right and you can see canadian edition here as well now this comic book was printed by bell features a canadian company but the original comic book was called quarterly comics and they were very active in the golden age of comics okay now in the golden age of comics they you know they did uh, superhero comics war comics uh humor comics horror comics and romance comics and this is one of the romance comics they published and this series love scandals has i believe um i believe it has six issues in it right and this is number one right now quarterly comics is the american version of this comic book and this is the canadian version right and the quarterly comics instead of having the cdl on the logo here uh, on where you see the cdl here here it has the quarterly comics logo and instead of having canadian edition here it has february written on it okay so this thing came out in february 1950 okay and let's flip through this and it's only sitting here by one staple okay let's take a look at the back cover as well and like i mentioned quarterly comics did a fair bit of or you know fair bit of comic books in the golden age of comics they were basically existed they were founded in 1937 uh, and they went defunct in 1956 some pencil marks here who knows how old these pencil marks are right uh, what is this thing newspaper scope uh, are you one of the lucky winners contest number 83 winner dick low oh they're actually names of the people that won the contest 410 32nd street west saskatoon that's cool uh wolverton kingston oh these are all uh, from canada these are cities in canada olivia cassidy uh, 96 bay street kingston ontario right constant contest winner number 84 winners saskatoon ontario quebec ontario ontario nova scotia dartmouth that's cool uh ontario pei wow 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 north market street pei says right and newcastle new brunswick the bell features of publishing and they got a little thing on top which marks it off ontario okay so bell uh bell features was the canadian company okay now before we start getting into this let me read you how bell features came to be now bell features was known as a commercial sign as uh, commercial signs of canada okay and what we're giving you i'm giving you a little history of this let's flip through this thing okay that way take a look at this thing and should we read the fine print first let's read the fine print first and then we'll flip through it and i'll give it, i'm going to give you a little history of this what is this thing uh 25 cents dolls plastic rain capes add one of these pretty <laughs> add one of these pretty rain capes with hood attached to your doll's wardrobe to keep her dry and rainy days wow easy mail order how much are they charging for this oh 25 cents that's cool take a look at that 25 cents and the fine print for this as we've done before right let's just read the fine print for this thing take a look at this uh published in published by bell features and publishing company limited 165 york street toronto ontario okay bi-monthly uh, contents copyright and must not be reproduced without permission the publisher accepts no responsibility for unsolicited material 
any similarity between characters and names contained herein of any person either living or dead is purely coincidental all names and characters used are fictional okay and this is the story that we're going to read uh, yesterday's darling okay so let's flip through this and let me give you a little bit of history about bell features okay I got some notes written here for for us to go through now bell features was also known as commercial signs of Canada and they were Canadian comic book publishing during they became a Canadian book uh, publishing company during World War two sort of before that a little bit as well okay it was founded in 1939 in a commercial art business okay and it changed its name in 1994 uh, or 19 um, 94 1942 okay it changed its name to Bell features and the way it worked I'm gonna read you a little bit uh, just quoting something that I found online through wiki right so Bell features okay brothers Gene and Cy Bell ran a commercial art business in Toronto called commercial signs of Canada they had previously been approached by Edmund Lugart who was looking to publish looking for a publishing outlet for his comic books when the war exchange conservation act passed in December 1940 the importation of American comic books was cut off right and I'm gonna read you a little bit about what this war exchange Cons conservation act is right but before we get into that just to let you know and here's the other story my forbidden romance check this out okay uh, after the war so just quoting again okay after the war it ended in 1945 trade restrictions were loosened and American comics were once again flood flooded uh, the Canadian market with better distribution color interiors and glossy covers Canadian publishers found it hard to compete in such a small market uh, and their last comic that they published uh, uh, was in 1947 and Bell ceased operations in 1953 right so they were publishing from 1941 uh, it was founded in 1941 and they they went defunct right in 1953 and here's the pages that are loose by the way take a look at this thing All right now what is this war exchange conservation act so let me read you a little bit on the war exchange conservation act that we that i found here right and you can find this online and i'll provide the link in the description of this video look at that beautiful artwork yeah. take a look at that white way heartbreak and it's very difficult to find who the artists and writers for these were i could only find that bill ward i believe most likely did the artwork for the first issue or for the first story the rest of this we don't know okay they might be some kind of information on and online but i couldn't find it so if you do know who did the stories for the rest of these please let me know okay but let me read you this paragraph that I found online regarding the war exchange conservation act okay now quote on September 15 1939 shortly after Canada's declaration of war against Germany the foreign exchange control board was established to to oversee the rationing of foreign currency which it did with varying severity until 1951. In December 1940, as Canada's trade deficit with the U.S. grew and British gold shipments were curtailed, government intervention in the economy broadened with the introduction of the War Exchange Conservation Act, aimed at countries outside the sterling bloc. Sterling bloc countries traded heavily with england and kept their currency at parity with the english pound right it was primarily designed to conserve american dollars 
by restrict, restricting, restricting the importation of non-essential goods. Among the items banned were uh, fiction periodicals, a category that encompassed pulps and other newsstand magazines, including comic books. The government had inadvertently laid the groundwork for Canadian comic book industry. And what basically happened was because of this War Exchange Conservation Act, all of a sudden, different publishing houses, right? Different companies that were doing print media or graphic design and stuff got into printing comic books because it was a whole market that opened up. And as soon as the War Exchange Act was lifted, a lot of Canadian publishers went under because the American com American companies were able to flood Canada with their comic books, right? Which is absolutely brilliant, which is something that I just recently found out, right? Just doing the research into this and some of the other, uh, other romance comics that I've gotten into in the last uh, few years, right? And here's a little story, love story, right? dark angel should we read the first couple of paragraphs of this let's read the first couple of paragraphs of this right so that was sort of the history of this comic book that i wanted to give you guys okay i thought that was really really cool and i'm dying to get into more of this history as well okay so dark angel Nora came through the back backstage door five minutes before rehearsal time Hurrying her lovely face. Uh, hold on, where is it? Rehearsal time. Hurrying, hurrying. Her lovely face pink with the cold that had descended upon Broadway. Johnny Wingate was just wheeling the small practice piano out onto the barren stage. He turned quickly and his dark, handsome face lit up a smile. He hurried across to her. Okay, let me bring this up closer. Maybe you can see it as well. Read it on this. You look lovely, Nora, he said softly. I lie awake at night trying to make myself believe you're as beautiful as my heart tells me you are. And then I see you in the morning and find I was wrong. You're more beautiful. <laughs> so I said, let's read the whole thing. Why not? You should be writing poetry, Nora, Nora uh, dimpled, instead of shifting some scenery. Why are you a stagehand, Johnny? Would I have met you if I were anything else, he asked. He took her cold hands and she came into his arms, naturally and willingly, her expressive fur coat crushing against his overhauls. I can't believe it's true, dearest. I still can't believe it. Why not, Nora asked. This is America, Johnny. Does the luck that made me uh, made me a musical comedy star make me any better than the luck that had you shifting scenery instead of selling bonds or living in a mansion? It's you I've fallen in love with, Johnny, not your job or your clothes. Their lips met and a long sweet kiss that broke only when a dressing room door opened it was johnny who stepped hastily back gloria darren came out in her practice clothes waved gaily gaily and went on across the stage other members of the cast began to drift in sammy dakin ran ran chubby fingers over the piano keys some chorus girl rattled as a swift tap tap break that echoed through the dark empty theater the outer door opened and ken murdoch the producer of the show came in he looked gloomy and downcast and barely gr grunted at them in passing i'll see you after rehearsal nora said and left johnny there in the entry his face radiant, his eyes dazed with disbelief. He would never, it seemed, he would never, it seemed to Nora, 
get over the fact that a star would fall in love with the stagehand but it had happened Nora went across the stage to the group instead of bark barking instead of barking them into line for her rehearsal Ken was facing them solely so somberly I'm afraid it's all off kids Mark Hamilton was angling this show you know putting up the money for for our opening last night Mark Mark was taken to a hospital with a severe stroke until he's out of danger there'll be no money we'll have to postpone the opening maybe give it give it all up I've tried all morning to raise money but it's no use we're licked I've saved some Ken Nora said uh, quickly I can let you have 10,000 other voices spoke up quickly offering everything from a few thousand to a few hundred out of hand earned saving hard earned savings Ken bit his lip and when he answered his voice was husky and emotion uh, with emotion your grandkids all of you I I wish it would it would help but it won't we need at least a hundred and fifty thousand to open anything less is useless I'm sorry if we had an angle I'll put a hundred and fifty thousand into your show a soft voice said from the wings they all whirled Johnny Wingate stood there in his overalls he had a checkbook and fountain pen in his hand he smiled at their stares oh I have it all right Ken you must know the Wingate fortune I'm Johnny Albert Wingate sole heir there was bedlam for a time when the shouting died down Ken was facing Johnny Wingate but but what on earth were you doing on a as a stagehand then Johnny smiled a man in love does strange things Ken I was in love with a girl I'd never met so I took the only way I could to find uh, could to find to meet her and find out if she was as wonderful as my heart told me believe me she was even finer Ken he turned then and put his arm around Nora and smiled into the wet blue of her eyes in this case it was a gamble that paid out I guess with my kind of luck I'll find myself backing another hit show got a contract handy Ken or a preacher <laughs> cute love story eh? and this is a pre code right there is no comic code stamp on this right so the pages are loose from the staple right the one staple that is cool just imagine 1950s reading this right this was basically your only form of uh, well sort of entertainment to a cer certain degree with visuals right unless you had the money uh, movies were around but I think there were uh, they were sparse comic books uh, had a lot of distribution thief of hearts take a look at this smash musical Colorado the artwork for these are brilliant eh? very pretty look at the embraces the kisses the dances look at that a lot of these stories uh, comic books may they be horror or science fiction or romance comics from the 1950s they had one page text stories written as well which is something that's missing from comics uh, from the modern age right pretty now take a look at the cigarettes highly recommended look into the history of cigarettes how cigarettes were marketed uh, especially to women and it basically came out in, in uh, in New York during a Macy's parade with uh, 
Bernese, I believe that's, that's what his name was. The I believe the nephew of Fruit, and they decided to market cigarettes to women just to show that they were, you know, independent women smoke cigarettes and that a whole bunch of women in the Macy's parade smoking cigarettes and cigarettes caught on, right? What is this guy? The new hockey album is out. Check this out. 1949. Hockey album. The new hockey album is out. All new pictures, new stars, new thrills. Right? Here it is. The 1949-50 hockey album. We have printed 15,000 advanced copies of this all new edition. Some 30,000 hockey fans today are proud owners of the 1948-49 hockey album. Now here's your chance to be one of the first to own the 1949-50 edition, which with its all new pictures makes your hockey library more complete. I wonder how much these things are selling for on uh, online, how much they're going for. Hockey album brings you bigger thrills more excitement for this new edition of the big illustrated hockey book has more intimate more revealing pictures it brings you more than 100 full page action and portrait pictures you get close-ups of all the new stars like alan stanley and ray uh, tim grin take a look at this tim grin I don't know my hockey history and many many others I don't know how popular how well known those two people are I'm assuming well known if they're in this right and the Canadian editions of these comic books have Canadian ads in them right take a look at this you too can touch you too can be touch what oh tough not touch <laughs> right my dyslexia can get in you too can be tough learn to defend yourself 55 lessons worth 150 dollars when given in training so how much is this this is a dollar 49 right now only a dollar 49 In an emergency, would would your action show the lady in your life you are a man? Sure, you've you've guts, but is bravery bravery alone enough to stand up against guns, knives, clubs, while you have only your bare hands? Wow. Jack Dempsey, show you how to fight tough. Here, his co-author. Rivas in American Combat Judo, American Combat Judo, Bernard J. Kosnick, 200 photographs illustrated Jiu Jitsu, wrestling, foot fighting, police tactics. Dollar fifty at that time, you could have bought 15 of these comic books, right? I would rather buy 15 of these comic books that's cool magic you say yes it does seem to work like magic but there's no mystery about combat judo it is simple uh, simply applied science a ruthless efficient method of counterattack, the all-out method that pulls no punches that moves with such blinding speed it makes wrestling and first fighting look like creepy uh, creeping along with with your brakes on wow wrestling and fist fighting wrestling is pretty good i've done a little bit of uh jujitsu and i've done a little bit of a little bit more than a little bit of wrestling wrestling is pretty powerful check this out see a fine print i'm not sure if the camera is going to be able to zoom in this thing says police tactics just read a couple of these things fighting two men at once rope strangle hammer lock comes alive t 
taking on a willing taking an unwilling prisoner arm twist how to gouge out eye how to gouge out an eye check this out the last one right break from front bear hug so it has defensive measures as well breaks and releases holes and locks disabling blows wow cool and this was the winner stuff right very cool very cool so should we have a read through love scandals let's read the what the text here says right and these things are ridiculously collectible just to give you a little bit more info regarding canadian mission golden age comics in the 1990s where i've I got my hands on some EC comics that were Canadian edition. The Canadian edition comics were selling for less than the American edition comics for EC comics, right? As well as some of the other golden age comics. The Canadian editions, there weren't too many people, you know, looking for them. Right now, from what I understand, Canadian edition comics sell for a premium relative to the American edition comics. One of the reasons is their Canadian collectors are trying to get their hands on them. Canadian archives, museums are trying to get their hands on them. As well, the print run for the Canadian editions is much lower than the print run for the American editions. Okay. For example, for this comic, I checked uh, CGC's website to see how many of these were this comic were graded. Okay. There's only one CGC comic graded, okay? And it's graded at 8.0, okay? So in the CGC database, there's only one of these things that's graded, okay? I don't know how many of these were printed. I don't know how many of these are around, but I'm very happy to have this graded at around three, right? Good, very good, right? Only one graded. In the CGC database very tempted to send this in to be created and if you can take a look at this thing the staple on this is rusted right and there's only one staple on this right and there is no other holes so they printed these books with only one staple keeping the comic book together right which is one of the reasons that three three or four center pages uh, are loose from the staple okay very cool very cool let's read the cover of this let's do a reading of love scandals number one from quarterly or the canadian edition bell features from february 1950 and this cover bill ward right amazing artwork bill ward created amazing good girl pinups he did work later on once he stopped doing comics in the 1950s 1953 is uh, the last time that he did any work for comic books after that he did work for indie comics some porn magazines and um, different types of magazines sort of cartoon style of uh, uh, work right on the big pages that we talked about like one one and a half meters large large original art beautiful work right so the cover is by bill ward and the first story that we're going to read the art is by bill ward okay let's read this thing i close my eyes in the sheer ecstasy of carrie's kisses though i knew the specter of my father's sin would soon come between us wow a big extra value magazine look at this beautiful you got a little bonsai tree here too right take a look at this thing a little Japanese figure here as well at the beginning we took a look at this the art and we read the fine print right as we always do so let's take a look at this thing 
let's read this. I'm super psyched about this, really. As soon as I saw the billboard artwork, the original pieces, I was like, oh, wow. Uh, this guy just became one of my top go-to uh, people that I like to collect their comics. Yesterday's Darling, right? And I'm not 100% sure if any of the other stories is billboard as well. Five years ago, everybody knew Darla Manners, the darling of Broadway. You saw me in Man Trap, in, in Kick It Up Your Heels, and in my uh, crowning triumph, Yes, Yes, Yvonne. You heard me on the radio. You played my records, and then you forgot me. You didn't know, didn't ask where I was those five bitter anguished years but those who were closest to me who shot up with my rising star who swore eternal devotion did they wonder did they care did they remember i had to know them answer answer and so one day a ghost came back to broadway that's cool beautiful writing beautiful writing right. it was an afternoon in early fall when I saw Times Square again Times Square it hasn't changed much in five years some new signs some storefronts not so many men and girls in uniform i registered in a little walk walk up hotel five years ago i had had a suite at the park royal park royale what became of max feinster finster who ran this place years ago she asks little fat guy with glasses oh he died three four years back that would be 250 lady in advance Two fifty for a room in broadway What a flood of memories poured in when I left myself, let myself into the room. Why, why? It's the very room I had when I first came here from Indiana. A sacred little country girl, a scared little country girl with footlight fever. And when no job came and my money ran out, there was, there was incredible, heart-wrenching kindness to remember. You're a good girl, honey. No nonsense. You stay a while anyhow. Pay me when, when you land something. So she's remembering. Oh, Mr. F Finster, you're the kindest, sweetest man. Thank you, she says. And the job at last in a little second second rate musical company there she is right there right. no 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 for the love of mud can't any of you babes do a simple time step with a little extra flair i i can she says look at the guy's face very cool the guy's smoking He's the conductor of the music, I guess. Ah, oh, look at her all jazzed up. That, by one of those miracles of Broadway, became a smashing hit and sent, sent my small star rising. Listen to them cheer. That makes the hours 
and hours of aching practice worthwhile. No, no, I can't stand the memories. I should never have come back to Broadway at all. That's all over me. That's all over for me. Oh, she's all red, flushed, anxious. I hurried out into the crowd, but there, but where, in all those echoing side streets, could I find refuge from memories? Majestic South Pacific, the sign says. The Majestic, oh, I wonder if they'll stay there as long as I did in Bali, Bali who girl. That was my first starring role, she said. Lindsay's we used to have breakfast there at noon wasn't that silly sob breakfast at noon that's show business that's what she says look at a guy with a hat his face I didn't walk, want to walk that next block to see the queer little name that would wrench my heart. But something drove me on. Crick, a funny fat man with a flair for food and a nose for celebrities. I wonder whom he's toasting tonight. Nobody could pronounce uh, Crick's full name, but every columnist and celebrity on Broadway made it a regular hunt. There is Winchwell, Winchell, Winchell, and the reporter from for Variety, and Jack Halfin, the producer, is at his usual private table. Check this out: the Variety here that she's mentioning when she checked into the hotel. Check this out. In the magazine, it says variety, right? That's cool. Five years ago, almost to the night, they gave me a birthday party at Crick's. Life sent a pho photographer. It was news. Wow, she was in Life magazine. Silence, please. Do you hear me? Quiets, a toes to our gut, uh, to our Darla. Everybody's. Take a look. She's right there. And that's the same guy making a toast to her, right? That's standing there. Harold whispered. His own toast, Harold Boncraft, my darling, my leading man, my star of secret dreams and spoken promises, to the queen of Broadway and empress of my heart. Thank you, Harold. That makes my birthday perfect, she says. The club. Pigale. But sweetheart, madly as I love you, I can't be late. People pay their money to see me in that show. Oh, Harold, with that girl from Hearts, Hearts East. Variety said he was a hit in Golden Banners. I'm glad for him. Oh, wow. So these are all memory. And this is going back to the present. She's seeing his own, her own love. Oh, watch it, sister. Streets are for cars, you know. Wow, oh, what a rude guy. He didn't know me. He looked right at me and didn't even know me. And I believe all his ardent promises once. Ah, oh, poor girl. I 
hadn't wanted to come back to Broadway didn't want to do what I did but something stronger than my will was driving me I'll go into Kirk's just being recognized and remembered will ease some of the pain I know maybe I'll I'll meet old friends I walked inside and crick cricks crick came hustling forward as he did to meet all patrons aren't you in the wrong place lady cafeteria is down street oh hamburger or hamburger shops maybe this very expensive place yes yes thank you I am in the wrong place oh he didn't recognize her crick didn't even know me I turned blindly to rush out and bumped into a man just entering watch it girly those are $40 shoes you're mashing oop I'm sorry she says that was Sam Burns going into Cricks, my own agent I wonder how rich he got off off 10% of my earnings and now he doesn't recognize me face to face look at that guy coming back was all a ghastly mistake I'll take the, take the next bus out and try to forget Broadway as Broadway forgot me what did the signs say immediate seating two chillers King Kong and Dracula oh, that's cool You got a bus stop a cop standing right there kinter virginia there's a bus out at one in the morning miss nothing before that one in the morning but but what will i do all that time it's only dinner time now that's hours to spend on broadway blindly I stumbled into the first haven that offered I was through the door before the shock of memory hit me oh no not this place dear heaven I didn't want to remember this stage door seats take a look where is she she's at a coffee shop there were no familiar faces now I made myself go to the counter coffee and donuts please scuttle of mud and two sinkers coming right up that's cool scuttle of mud and two sinkers wow the stage door was a showgirls headquarters it was handy food was cheap and good and jimmy sheldon had tips on jobs here you are and a tip honey keep an eye out keep an eye on schubert alley michael todd may be casting for a new new show next week you're a prince jimmy but you're slipping i only ordered coffee Oh, look at that sitting on her with a cake as well or a donut or something take a look Jimmy knew when a girl was broke eat that sinker and no argument it's on the house we're celebrating the dishwasher's birthday you're the sweetest nicest guy who ever lived you big lug she says Oh, it's just good business to keep customers eating when you're a star you can give a give me a pass to your show honey I will Jimmy and I'll be a star I won't quit until I am she says you will be you've got that something whatever it is that'll put you at the top maybe it's confidence something something inside you that knows you're good that's cool d 
the only date I ever had with Jimmy I I had to ask for it was the day I landed my first chorus job Jimmy Sheldon I've been waiting for you to get off work what must I do to get you to walk home with me gosh Darla do you mean it I I'd rather walk home with you than own Manhattan he says we strolled up Fifth Avenue to Central Park you're a strange person Jimmy you're so swell and understanding to all the kids and you never ask favor of anyone I know what you've all you've all gone through honey you see I came here to crack into show business too and went broke trying he says they're sitting on a bench I'd written some plays and I thought they were good nobody else did so I ended uh, ended slinging hash at the stage door but you haven't given up have you your dreams are just a uh, bright and shiny as ever aren't they she asks that's cool he's a nice guy yeah let's check it out let's check it out oh I'm writing a new play now and it's better you you see Darla I'm writing it for you I visualize you as the star that's the nicest compliment I ever had we'll both reach the top Jimmy someday I'll star in your play Darla Darla the day you first walked in my heart went all crazy and it's never been the same since oh wow it wasn't quite the same with me darling at first you were just an awfully nice guy but you moved in on me and took over I'm scared honey you'll hit the top because nothing can stop you and there's no room up there for for a hasher silly lug you silly lug if I weren't queen of the earth my first command if I were the queen of the earth my first command would be to put another throne right next to mine it's cute between rehearsals and dance lessons I had no time for dates but I managed to run to the stage door once a day happy birthday Darla I hear your shows opening next month oh thank you darling yes we open at the belk nap and three weeks in three weeks I'm so excited I can hardly breathe she says she's just remembering all this wow oh Jimmy it's beautiful I'll wear it always he's giving her a necklace it's a heart on it eh? oh it wasn't at all what I'd like to give you Darla you know that maybe someday the night of my opening my dressing room was crammed with flowers but my heart found a single red rose it's from Jimmy I left the I left a ticket for him at the lunch counter I hope he he saw the show then the miracle on Broadway and my rocket was rising but each new opening brought that one red rose of memory Jimmy I I've been so busy I haven't seen him in ages I'm so ashamed of myself she says and there was Harold uh, Boncraft my leading man who was always near me nearby by with little attentions gifts compliments 
You look simply ravishing, darling. I've had Sherm Billingsley reserve a table at the stork for us. I plan to hunt up an old friend tonight, Harold. But if you've already made the reservations, I'll postpone it, she says. I didn't realize how much we were we were together or how fickle time was slipping past until I heard Walter Winchell's broadcast one night. Special to New York, New York news papers, watch the marriage license list. It may be wedding bells for lovely Darla Manners on Broadway and her leading man. Oh, that's a reporter releasing that info. Harold, do you know anything about that? I know it's a wonderful idea, sweetheart, Harold says. Ah, oh, what a scumbag. Eh? If everybody knows it but us, maybe it's time we got wise to realities, he says. You must know by now that I'm mad about you, sweet. And think of the pop, uh, publicity. Together on the stage and off. I'm, I'm not sure, Harold. Please leave me alone. I, I want to do some some thinking she says and she's holding the single white rose eh that's cool he's remembering jimmy the moment harold left i rushed out jimmy i don't know what got into him in the middle of winchell's broadcast he ripped off his apron and quit walk right out oh i guess this was a radio broadcast that was being broadcast there's a microphone and he's reading the news right so jimmy heard it and ripped off his apron and, and walk, walk right out oh i've got to find him she says jimmy vanished that night and i couldn't find him i was hope i was opening in my greatest triumph and every moment of my time was taken are you positive there were no phone calls harold oh, i still trusting harold great heavens darla with broadway at your feet stop fussing about a broken down hash slinger and smile people are looking she says and there's a sign yes yes yvonne and then the unforgettable of horror of that december day oh pearl harbor bombed check that out right how frightful all those poor boys killed without a chance just when we have another hit on our hands oh what a scumbag i wonder what this will do to the box office he says The show was a smash hit, but I took more and more time to help all I could in the big job we all faced. What'll it be, folks? The boys in front have all my recordings. I'll give one with every bond sold today. Right. They're selling war bonds. We've seen this before in another column, like Jingle Jangle that we read, right? all about the war bonds i put in long weary hours at the stage door canteen oh this is one of the places where people used to buy tickets to dance with the ladies i believe the soldiers right sheldon jimmy sheldon in is his name i'm sure he's in the service somewhere Oh, she was still looking for him if I ever hear of him miss miss manners you bet I'll let you know what kind of a mug is he running out on a girl like you he says
And then I made the move that changed everything. I'm sorry, Harold, but my mind is made up. There won't be any new opening this fall for me. Wow. You can't do this. Are you crazy? Going off to Europe with a bunch of USO hams? What about me? You ruined my career, Harold says. It was raining where our group took off for Newfoundland and the storm grew steadily worse. I think, think I'm getting airsick. How bad can these storms get? She's on a plane. Someone else saying that. Not half as bad as a boys go through every day over Germany, Kit. It rains fire and steel on them. This is only water, she says. But rain was enough. Up there near uh, Gander Bay on the first leg of a flight that was never finished. Oh, they crashed. Look at that, the plane crashes. Right. At first there was a deluge of flowers, enough for everyone in the army hospital where they took, took me after the crash. This is queer, after all those gigantic bouquets there's one red rose with no name card oh wow jimmy jimmy oh where is he why doesn't he come she says months became years and then the flowers and messages dwindled away but each birthday a lone red rose came out of the past oh she's in a wheelchair that out I'm just a florist miss I get a telegram order from New York with no name on it it's paid so I delivered the rose she said and the guy says the flower guy right all all right thank you anyhow for coming out I'd hope you might know something about him she was asking I think she's back at the little coffee shop right check that out then the memories were gone and I was back in the dismal lonely present wow. I have to go how much do I owe you she's crying see a tear is coming down for her right. eat that sinker and no arguments it's on the house, dishwasher's birthday. Ha <laughs> ha, it's Jimmy. Jimmy, no, it can't be. I'm still mixed up with memories. If, if I can always be, if I can always be mixed up in your memories, Darla, I'd ask no more of life. That's cool. We like the Jimmy character. He's a nice guy. Oh, my dearest, it's been so long, so terribly long, with so much pain and suffering for you. Why, Jimmy? Why didn't you write or come to me? You knew where I was. You always sent the rose. I had to know your future, darling. As long as there was any chance of your, you starring, I didn't want to interfere. I'll never star again, Jimmy. I can walk but I'll never dance and something went out of my singing I'm through with the stage she says as if in a dream I heard Jimmy's story he had finished and sold his play the play I had promised to star in Jimmy says but it wasn't too good I realized I'd never be a top writer what I really wanted was to be on Broadway helping others what are you doing Jimmy have you been working here since 
You came back from the war? She asks. Check it out. In a way, I owe the stage door, dearest. Bought it with the proceeds of my one play. I've kept everything as it was when I first saw you. Oh, wow. You, you big, silly, sentimental goof. I had to ask you for our first date, remember? She says. Do I have to repeat the pattern and propose to you? Darla, Darla, my own. I've been frightened. You had everything at your feet. I couldn't dare hope you'd be happy with this. If you wouldn't hush, if you wouldn't hush your big silly mouth, I'll do it for you. <laughs> Al Albert, Joan Bliss, happy endings. Right. That's cool. Look at the people's faces walking by. That's pretty cool same type of story as the as the text that we read yeah i don't think there's any comic books like this around right now this should be there's a void for comic books like this i think i hope anyway my forbidden romance take a look at this You're a fool, Carla. Scott doesn't love you. He loves your fame. Every time he kisses you, he laughs at you behind your back. No, 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 she says. And then they go back into memory again, I guess, when she was a little girl. Take a look. Right. Look at the coloring. So weird on the older comics, right? The press would just they go as the colors go past the lines and stuff this offset very cool very cool so that's the first story from love scandals right number one does this look like a happy ending too let's check it out was this a happy ending as well looks like a happy ending to me but of course i'll come of course i'll come but i really never left you at all she says look at this one white way heartbreak I knew in real life what most girls can realize only in their dreams. For on the toughest, most heartless street in the world, I found, I found both success and love. But everything must be paid for on Broadway. And the price exacted from me was dis disillusionment and my heart's bitter anguish super cool look at this you got dancers and stuff stars everywhere picking up the girl carrying her and a guy the girls doing the same to her to him right and they mix together with lightning in the middle very cool looks like uh, all the stories in this were based on broadway new york actors and actresses and dancers very cool does this have a happy ending let's take a look let's go to the last panel oh hold on a second what does the last panel say oh let's let's read the last four panels of this we're giving spoilers if you ever plan on reading this you know you don't want to watch this part my world seemed at an end and i heard Ted storm out the lobby how horrible right. how horrible not only to accuse me of such a thing but to quote that woman on it 
the woman who was supposed to be part only of his dead past and then as the first storm of emotion subsided i lay there thinking was this what i wanted this success that was tinged with heartache if i did i could have it regardless of ted or did i want only the love that had let me led me to this stardom the heaven i could find only in ted's arms it's only ted who counts if i lose him i'll have nothing i mustn't blame him for what he must what he just did every actor thrives only on the nourishment of his own ego i'll have to accept that i hurried to ted's apartment let's take a look at this i want to quit the show i can't be happy in it when i know i'm hurting you all i care about is your love windy baby i'm a selfish fool i've been thinking about what i said and i'm sorry you'll quit the show but only after it's had its full run and then you'll do it to take on the job of housewife <laughs> ted and i were married after the show after the show had run a year and we got ben yukum to be ted's best man that's broadway for you where everybody everybody's prediction can go wrong i usually do but on how how i love that great white way that great white way what a weird thing let's read what ted had said to her but the next morning i came crashing down to earth look at the reviews all of them ted lane dwarf by windy mills a new new star is in the uh, ferment i felt it all through the show you were stealing every scene cheryl was right you were playing me for a sucker all the time oh he was she was uh, dwarfing him in reviews everyone loved her didn't like him ted you don't believe that you can't ah that's cool the great white way thief of hearts should we read this one too let's read the opening for this one too they say there are no true new yorkers it's a lie i was born in the shadows of times square and when my dad died i took over his ticket agency tough and wise cracking as and smarted up on all grabs until a big dumb city detective came along and thought me the one steal I'd over overlooked the thief of my heart by a guy I had been raised to hate wow look at that kiss does this have a happy ending this looks like a happy ending book not too many love scandals let's take a look is that it let's read the last three panels okay you big clown haven't i been expecting you to kiss me for months and planning to slap you slap you for it so you'll not think it's too late marshy marshy darling oh look at that kiss that's a great kiss and that's for keeping a lady waiting while oh she slaps her look at that she slaps her bam and that's for keeping a lady waiting while you get up your big dumb nerve that's a happy ending too happy ending comics not that not that Let me adjust this so when we put it back in the bag the pages don't get squished cool love scandals number one 
Canadian edition. I hope you enjoyed. And we'll be doing uh, more love readings, love comics, romance comics from the Golden Age and Silver Age of comics as well. Because uh, those are the only ones I have. I don't know if there's any romance comics from the modern age of comics. Uh, if there is, I'll try to get my hands on them. And maybe we'll do one and do a comparison between the Golden Age, Silver Age, and Bronze and Modern Age as well. I think I do have some bronze as well. Right? Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next reading. Bye for now.